I, now I'm going to tell you what an expectation is. In measure theory, you would call it an integration or integral of a function. In probability theory, we're going to call this an expectation of a random variable. The story of expectations starts with simple functions or simple random variables. A random variable, so RV will stand for random variable. Remember that this is a function from omega to the real numbers and it's measurable. So random variable as a function, think about this as a function for a second, is called simple. Random variable is going to be called x, so random variable x is simple if it's piecewise uh, constant. If it's piecewise constant, so in other words, there's going to exist, exist n larger than zero, obviously, but also finite, so a finite integer number. There exists, exists x1, x2, up to xn real numbers, and there exists a1, a2, up to an events, so sets in the sigma algebra, such that the random variable x can be written as this finite sum from 1 through n of the values xk and indicator of ak. Okay, what does that mean? So x is a function from omega to the real numbers. AK are, AKs are sets in the sigma algebra, so they are subsets of omega. Maybe I could even draw a little picture. Here is omega. And let's just, for simplicity, assume that the AKs, so A1, A2, A3, and so on. Let's just assume that they are, for uh, simplicity, we assume that they are uh, disjoint. If they are not different, uh, I think you can always decompose them, so that we not uh, care about that too much. And then the value of the random variable on A1 is going to be X1. This indicator is 1, so indicator of AK of omega is 1 if omega belongs to AK and 0 otherwise if omega does not belong to AK. Okay, that's what the indicator means. And that indicator, which is 1 or 0, is multiplied by XK. So on A1, my random variable takes the value X1. On A2, it takes the value X2. On A3, it takes the value X3, and so on, at least in the disjoint case. That's what we call a simple random variable. Okay, there are a finite number of different X values which it can take on. Now, these are pretty simple and nice, and the point in them is that every random variable can be well approximated by these simple random variables. This is a theorem which, again, I'm not going to prove here, but let me just mention the statement. So, there are two theorems here, or two statements I'm uh, going to tell you about. <coughs> The first one is that for every random variable x, which is not necessarily simple, so any random variable, there exists a sequence of simple random variables. There exists random variables x1, x2, and so on and so on. So these are simple random variables such that two things. First, the absolute value of xn is less than or equal to the absolute value of x for every omega. So think about these still as functions on the uh, sample space. So for every omega, we have that for the values of this function. And we have pointwise convergence. So for every omega in the sample space, the value of xn at that particular ome omega converges with n to the value of x at that same omega. So pointwise convergence of these functions. Okay? 
and theorem B, if my random variable happens to be non-negative as a function, so for all omegas the value of x omega is non-negative, then the same thing holds and in particular x n omega can be chosen to be non-decreasing in n. non-decreasing in n for every omega. Okay, so there is a sequence of simple random variables which converges in an increasing fashion, fashion to xn for every omega, if xn is non-negative. The notation for that, we'll, we'll have a notation which we use for that, and let me just show that to you. Notation for this scenario is that xn of omega converges in an increasing fashion to x of omega. Okay, that's the notation for, say, for the statements that xn converges to x and xn plus 1 is larger than or equal than xn. Okay, so this, these are facts from measure theory. Again, something I'm not going to prove, but using these facts, I can now define the expectation of a random variable and I'm going to exactly follow these steps in the construction so I'm going to now make a few definitions in a sequence so going from simpler to more complicated Okay, so the first one is when you have a simple random variable, if x is given by such a finite sum of some xk values times indicator of ak, so it's simple, then of course it's very easy to define its expectation, so that's going to be the expectation of x or expected value. The way I define it in the simple cases, of course, is going to be the sum of the xk values times the probability of these events ak, which makes sense because if you recall my definition of a simple random variable, the a's belong to f so it makes sense to talk about their probabilities. Okay, so this is how I make an expectation of a simple random variable. Okay, that was step one. Step two, if x is non-negative, uh, and of course it's a random variable, so it's measurable, non-negative, okay, then pick a sequence x1, x2, and so on of simple random variables such that xi converges to x in an increasing fashion for every omega. What I'm using here is part b of the previous theorem. Okay, so I can pick a sequence of simple random variables which converge in an increasing fashion to x at every omega, so pick some, some of these. Now it's easy to see from this definition that the expectation of the xi's will also be non-decreasing, okay, because these guys are non-decreasing, and so the expectation of x itself is going to be defined as the limit of these non-decreasing expectations, and this limit will exist because for non-decreasing numbers you always have a limit. Okay, so that's the expectation of a non-negative random variable. Notice that this thing is obviously non-negative, that's very easy to see, but it can actually be infinite. 
it can be a finite number or it can as well be infinite and that's fine that's absolutely okay non-negative random variables can have infinite expectations that's that's fine all right and finally if i have any random variable if x is a random variable i'm dropping this assumption that is non-negative it can be any positive or negative random variable then any number actually can be written as the difference between its positive and negative part okay so what is the positive part the positive part of a number is just the number itself when it's positive and zero otherwise the negative part of a number is minus this number if it's negative and zero otherwise so the positive part of three is three the negative part of three is zero the positive part of minus two is zero and the negative part of minus two is two and now you can easily check that for any number actually you can look at the number as the positive part minus the negative part of that same number and if you do this for every omega then you can define a function like this so for every omega you can actually look at the value of x take this value under the positive part or under the negative part if you do the difference then you get back the value itself and notice that both the positive part and the negative part are non-negative random variables so it makes sense to take the expectation of these guys and e of x is defined to be the expectation of x plus minus the expectation of x minus which makes perfect sense except in one case it doesn't make sense uh, if e of x positive part is infinite as well as e of x negative part if both positive and negative parts have an infinite mean which can happen according to the previous version of the definition then we don't know how to take the difference of that in this case we say that the expectation doesn't exist so in that case when the positive part and the negative part are both infinite then we say that e of x doesn't exist in that case e of x doesn't exist okay now notice that there are a couple of cases here if the positive part has a finite mean and the negative part has a finite mean then the difference is finite everything is all right if the positive part has an infinite mean and the negative part has a finite mean then the difference is infinite so e of x is infinite and that's absolutely okay a random variable can have infinite mean that's fine if the positive part has a finite mean and the negative part has an infinite mean then the random variable can have a minus infinite expectation and that's again fine the only issue is when both positive and negative parts have infinite means in that case we don't have an expectation an example for that would be for those who know what that is a Cauchy random variable the Cauchy random variable has both positive and negative parts uh, as infinite expectation and therefore the random variable itself doesn't have a, a mean or an expected expected value 